I'm here today to talk to you about how you would go about setting a safe shelf life. But before we start on that, we need to um, decide what shelf life is. So if we're talking about shelf life, we mean the time after production that a product remains acceptable for consumption. So that can be sensory properties have to remain uh, as they would be, and chemical properties, and also microbiological characteristics. So by that we mean that any of the spoilage organisms present need to be um, there and not given you a deterioration in uh, acceptability. But also the product needs to remain safe, that's obviously key. Um, why is it really important to make sure that you've got the correct shelf life? Well, you need to have the correct shelf life because if you don't, the product may not be economically viable. You may end up with lots of food waste and also you could end up with lots of um, consumer complaints, so therefore potential loss of reputation. So if we're talking about how you actually set a shelf life, there's two uh, approaches that can be taken. Um, one of which is where you look at the quality aspects. So you're looking at the sensory properties, chemical properties, and as I mentioned, the microbiological properties. So what we'd be looking at is, in terms of micro, we would just be looking at how the spoilage organisms, ones that would naturally be present in most batches, and how they grow and affect the product's quality. But key is the safe shelf life. So what you will have assessed during your HACCP is, are there any pathogens that could be present that might give you um, issues with safety and food poisoning? So if there are, there are two approaches that you can take, and the first of which is predictive modelling. So this is a really, really quick and easy technique that can be used to assess if pathogens will grow in your product. So you already know from your HACCP whether the product type is associated with particular organism types. You'll know if the pH, water activity, temperature will allow these organisms to grow. So you will know which organisms are going to be an issue. So you can take those organisms and you can use a really easy to use computer modelling system where you generate growth curves like these. So what you can do is you can, you can think about what organisms are important and then produce growth curves so that you're able to see whether the organisms will grow under the temperature, pH, salt, um, water activity conditions of your product. So if we take this graph here as an example, we've got the time here in days and the log count. So what we're looking at is how many organisms grow in a particular time. So we've got botulinum here as an example and listeria. So your shelf life might be here, so you can say perhaps botulinum wouldn't grow, but listeria would grow within your shelf life, so therefore listeria might be the organism that limits your life. What you can also do is you might have a similar product, but you might have changed pH, water activity slightly, storage temperature um, might have changed, maybe lower, maybe higher. Um, you might have changed salt. So if you've changed any characteristics of the product, you can then have a look and see how that would affect growth. So what we've got here is a graph that shows again time and the numbers. And we've got, say for example, three different salt levels, but equally we could have three temperatures or three pHs. So we've got three, two and 1% salt. So no growth at 3%, but if you drop this to two, you do get growth, much faster growth of 1%. So you can see if that's going to affect um, growth. So when we're looking at modelling, we are sometimes looking to see for some organisms like Salmonella, Botulinum, whether there's been any growth at all. Ideally, those organisms won't be present, but if they were, are we going to see any signs of growth? For organisms like Listeria, for example, up here, um, there's some legislation that says you cannot have more than 100 CFU per gram in a ready-to-eat product, so you can use the model to see whether the listeria level will be more than 100 at the end of your life. You can also, um, for Bacillus and Staph aureus, they need to have grown to a lot higher level to be able to produce a toxin, and it's the toxin that's an issue. So you'd be, instead of looking for a level of just 100, you'd be looking to see when a level of, say, maybe 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5 has been reached, so something along these lines. Um, if you've done the predictive modelling and it's shown that growth hasn't occurred but you want to back that up just to be sure or if the modelling has shown that there are potential issues with growth and there might be growth over shelf life but you think that perhaps the model might be a bit fail safe as they can be sometimes but you want to prove where the growth will occur we could look at taking it one stage further and you can do inoculated challenge test studies. 
So this is where you actually deliberately inoculate the fruit with your test organism. So if we take Listeria for an example, we'd grow up the bacteria um, usually overnight. It involves inoculating small amounts into the food. And then we test that on day zero so that we know what level is present. Then we would inoculate enough samples and store them and incubate them at the relevant test conditions. So we'd always say make sure that you use conditions that are realistic. So maybe five to start off with representing manufacture and storage. Um, and they may be slightly higher when you've got your consumer um, storage at home. We then obviously test maybe weekly uh, if the product's got a month shelf life, maybe longer if it's got a lot longer shelf life. We'll look at and count the results. So we'll enumerate the colonies and we'll see whether there has been growth. We then would interpret it. So has there been a growth of, say, Salmonella or Botulinum? Is there a potential for a level of more than 100 of Listeria to be present? Is there um, a level of Bacillus and Staph aureus present that might give you an issue with toxin? So in summary, if you want to set a safe shelf life, there are a few ways you can go about it. You can do the really easy, quick to use predictive modelling in the first instance to um, actually hone in and find out where your risks are, what organisms are going to be an issue, where you need to focus. And then you can move on and do the challenge test studies, which will then um, prove whether growth is going to occur or not.